In dozens of cities, the electric scooter has taken off as a popular novelty. For sure, and for many, an environmentally friendly and economical alternative to driving. Last week, Ford Motor Company got into the act, buying its own scooter startup. But there is a big backlash building as well over this new fad. Special correspondent and Washington Post columnist Catherine Rampell has our story for our weekly segment, Making Sense. Sunny Santa Monica, California, home to the fitness enthusiasts of Muscle Beach, the high-tech startups of Silicon Beach, and for the past year, righteous fury about an invasive species. What's next when Domino's has their mobile pizza bot, uh, robot tooling down the uh, sidewalks, when the mythical Amazon drones want to park someplace? Are all these things going to reside on our public right of way? Martin Resnick is mad about dockless electric scooters. They're essentially skateboards with handles that can be picked up and dropped off anywhere with the help of an app. They've been rolled out in scores of cities around the country where local officials have struggled to cope. There's been cities that have just said anything goes. Transportation expert Juan Matute. Then there are cities who have said nothing goes in Milwaukee. And then there are cities like Santa Monica, where the whole craze began. It started last fall with just 10 scooters from one company, but soon sidewalks and streets were flooded with thousands of them. We visited to see, a year later, how the ride has been. Assistant City Manager Anuj Gupta admits that at times it's been bumpy. Suddenly became an unexpectedly emotional issue. Now many of the emotions are positive. Tourists here seem to love them. What made you decide to try the scooters? It just looked so, uh... I don't know, easy and reliable and fun. Uh-huh. Yeah. Lots of fun. Lots yeah, of fun? Absolutely. <laughs> Great way to see the sights. Some locals are also enamored. I get a little uh, rush out of it, like adrenaline. It makes me feel good that I accomplished something that's almost impossible. Plus, they're a green alternative to cars, at least for short distances. It's a great idea to be able to get to and from work when you need to, or just to go, like I am right now, Third Street Promenade, going to go hit a VIP event. So oh, very it's, it's taking me there. And they've created a network of gig economy jobs. Sean Besser works for one of the companies, Lime, as a so-called juicer, scooping up dead scooters at night for recharging. He puts in less than an hour a day, four or five days a week, and says he earns about $1,000 a month. It's real money. I feel like I'm doing a scavenger hunt where I'm actually getting paid as part of the scavenger hunt. But as the initial novelty faded, problems have emerged as the Santa Monica City Council heard at a seven-hour meeting in June. On February 15, 2018, I was struck by a Bird scooter rider who ran into me from behind on the sidewalk. I contacted Bird three times asking for their help in tracking the suspect. They have been unresponsive and unhelpful. I've been hit twice. I've got two herniated discs in my neck. I stepped out and one slammed right into me. Basically, pedestrians have become the bowling pins of Santa Monica. Pedestrians aren't the only ones getting injured. I wasn't even going fast. I was just, I had a distraction. William Kyrella says he'd dropped his bicycle off for repair and decided to ride a scooter. This is one of the CT scans. He woke up hours later in an emergency room. I hit the pavement with my head. I didn't have a helmet. And I had a crack behind the ear. And it went all the way up to here. I broke my head over here. In the forehead is like a throbbing pain. Kyrella is thinking about joining a class action suit filed recently against the scooter companies. Others have sought vigilante justice, documented on an Instagram account called Bird Graveyard. Bird is another scooter firm. It shows angry people giving new meaning to the term bird droppings. They're running them over with cars, setting them on fire, and sicking dogs on them in more ways than one. How's it going, man? Aaron Ravala runs his own scooter rental company, the sit-down kind. It blows my mind of how, like, all these young people are just, they just leave them everywhere. Kids these days, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You my, seem too my, young my, to be making this complaint. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, and I, I'm, <laughs> I'm not necessarily making a complaint. I'm just saying, approach it in a different way. Some people love them. Some people hate them. Clearly, they're not going away. In fact, they're spreading to cities all over the country. 
Santa Monica had to figure out how to fit this new technology into its city without either squelching a brand new industry or letting it scoot roughshod over the town. Not so long ago, Uber and Lyft fought similar battles with local officials. They moved aggressively into new markets, asking forgiveness rather than permission. Some scooter companies, like Bird, whose founder had worked at both Uber and Lyft, took a page from that book. I know how they play their game, because I'm, I'm an entrepreneur myself, so they, they break the rules and they, they apologize later. Juan Matute says Bird didn't have a choice. They wouldn't have been able to get a license because there wasn't a category for what they were doing. They wanted to demonstrate something, show that it worked, and then attract additional rounds of financing. They did attract financing. Bird is now valued at $2 billion. But in the process, they also attracted a criminal complaint for operating without a license. That ultimately resulted in a plea agreement in which Bird committed to a significant amount of money for public safety spending and a public safety awareness campaign. Meanwhile, Lime entered Santa Monica lawfully with a permit, but to the dismay of many, Lime too released over a thousand scooters. Their incentive is to saturate the market with as many as possible, make it as convenient as possible to use, get people trying it. Santa Monica decided to put the brakes on the expansion. Officials developed a pilot project to tighten regulations and cap the number of scooters. Other cities did the same, sometimes banning specific companies altogether. Andrew Savage is a Lime VP. We're in your headquarters in yeah. San Francisco, yeah. but you are not currently allowed to operate in San Francisco, right? Yeah, so uh, we were disappointed not to receive a permit. We're actually currently appealing that decision. Scooter companies have learned they need to take a more conciliatory approach with government officials. Open. Go, open it. That's true even for Lyft, which has recently entered the scooter business, including here in Santa Monica. You'll see ride a scooter. Ah. Lyft's David Fairbank. Mm -hmm. It seems like your strategy is, is different from how Lyft rolled out its ride-sharing business. Why is that? What's right in this, in this context is to, is to work closely with the cities, get permits, and, and launch once we, have, once we have the permission. They're also working hard to sell local governments on what benefits they bring to the community. We know that ride-sharing companies have increased congestion in our cities around the country. Congestion is a huge, huge uh, challenge that cities face, a cost implication in the hundreds of billions of dollars. And they're pitching cities on how scooters can reduce their local carbon footprint, which many committed to after the Trump administration pulled out of the Paris Climate Accord. So that's 350 cities that are cash-strapped already, that are making climate commitments that often come with costs. And so what we're able to do is come to cities and say, we can offer this program for free, and we can help reduce the carbon impact of your transportation system. The assumption is that scooter rides will replace car rides. So what problem is it that these scooters are intended to solve? Mobility in cities. I yeah. got feet, you know? <laughs> there are bikes. Yeah, it kind of remains to be seen what types of trips the scooters are displacing. That's what Santa Monica's pilot aims to find out, because city officials want to make more room for greener transportation. Santa Monica mobility manager, Francie Steffen. We spend a lot of time designing our streets for cars. Most cities are 20 to 25% street space, and that is space that we can give back to people to move around safely in our city. It doesn't happen overnight, just like we didn't create the freeway system overnight, but it's important we start doing it now if we're going to really address climate change seriously. But meanwhile, some companies haven't quite abandoned that aggressive streak. Just as news was breaking of scooter-related deaths elsewhere in the country, Byrd convinced the state of California to repeal a law requiring helmets for adults. Not that everyone, or even most people we saw scooting through Santa Monica, had been abiding by the letter of that law. Scooters may be conveniently available everywhere, but helmets are not. If I had a helmet, nothing would have happened to me. Nothing. Clearly, encouraging adoption while also protecting public safety remains a balancing act. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Katherine Rampell reporting from Santa Monica.